Travel 101, the pros and cons of travel credit cards. If you have a pulse and live in a capitalistic society, more than likely you have been offered to sign up for a credit card. With the rise in number of travelers, credit card companies have established and refined their strategic partnerships with airliners and hoteliers to offer up very tempting sign-ons. These credit card companies are hoping to lure you in with bigger and better bonus offers each year. They are banking on their initial offers to be enough to get you to sign on and open up a credit card, even if the card is not the best fit for you in the long run. So before you sign up for that next amazing offer, here are a few things to consider. First, does the card have an annual fee? This may sound very simple and basic, but you must look into what, if any, are the annual or hidden account fees. While closing out a credit card can often quote unquote look bad on your credit history, it still may be worth it to keep the card open for a couple of years, pay the annual fee, then close the account. This may yield a better return on investment if the introductory offer provides more value than the cost of paying the annual fee. So how do you determine that? Great question. I'm so glad you asked. Many of these cards have points or miles attached to the bonus offer. So what you can do is access the company website and go to where it says buy miles and see what the cost of the miles are if you bought them outright. If that amount is less than the annual fee, then that's a step in the right direction. The other thing to consider is how much does it take to redeem those points or miles? Again, I would recommend going to the website and playing around with hypothetical data in their search fields like book a flight or reserve a room. I would change the search from dollars to points or miles and see what the redemption amounts are for a typical trip. I would input various scenarios such as dates, locations, and service types to see if the offer is even worth it. You know, sometimes that introductory offer with that large annual fee can only get you a one night stay next door. Just saying. The last thing I would calculate is how points are accrued. Because after you've depleted that introductory offer bucket of points or miles, the real question then becomes, how quickly can you accrue more points or miles for your next trip? To me, this is the biggest factor of the trifecta approach because it will determine whether or not it is advantageous to keep the card active and keep paying the annual fee. This is what credit card companies hope to capitalize on, your lack of awareness and strategic planning. If you're not a big spender or frequent flyer with a particular airliner, oftentimes that credit card with that annual fee is not worth the slow accrual that you will be gaining on everyday purchases. It may be difficult to use that credit card to pay for your monthly bills because oftentimes utility companies charge additional fees for using a credit card. If this is true for you, what will most likely happen is that you will have to rely on other everyday purchases such as groceries, gas, and etc. And if you're used to using your debit card for these everyday purchases, oftentimes it can be a challenge to mentally switch over to using the credit card, especially if you're not disciplined enough to pay off the charges weekly or monthly, which again is what the credit card companies are banking on, literally. So in conclusion, take the trifecta approach. Examine the credit card fees, learn what the bonus offer gets you, and understand the accrual rates to determine whether or not that travel credit card deserves your John Hancock. For more content and to download copies of my ebooks, go to simplelifeconversations.blog. That's simplelifeconversations.blog. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast channel to get the latest episode of Conversation Starters.